So good morning, everyone. I'm Gal. I'm the chief cloud architect in Sela, and joining me to today is one of our senior cloud architects, Erez. Erez, are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Gal? Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, Gal, uh, one of my customers approached me, and uh, he wondered about uh, some of the Azure ETL tools. So if you can tell me a little bit about uh, what is ETL and what is the possibility tools that we have in uh, Azure? Oh, sure, no problem. Let, let's, let's take a look at it. Basically, in Azure, we have uh, the major ETL tools. Is, is ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load, for anyone who doesn't know it. Um, the idea behind ETLs are, is just to um, take data from one point to do some transformation and calculation about it, read it, and load it into another database. Uh, um, now, in in Azure, one of the one of the tools, maybe the major tool to do it, uh, is Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a tool that allows us to orchestrate data in in, in a graphically visual way, so we can drag stuff around. I will show it in a second, and then uh, we can connect. Uh, data and, and and sources and use all sorts of those tools. So, so let me let me just show you a quick uh, uh, demo that I created for a customer uh, with it. Um, so so this is like a customer that says that wanted to uh, take data out of uh, um, let's say he's getting that in CSV format um, from from a blob storage. And he wanted to um, do some elaborated pipeline using uh, Databricks and, and load the data into um, into a database. So what we did here is, is just every day we use you know tracking the day by, by deleting the the previous uh, day data. So, so as I said, if, if we're going to create it from scratch, so we can take always take uh, um, a pre predefined actions in data lake in data factory and connect. To, to data source, so the, the the most basic action in data factory uh, will always be to copy data. So we have a source, and that source can be all sort of, of, of uh, sources. Like if we're gonna open the new uh, source, you can see all of these sources. Is, you know, very very wide variety of sources that we can copy from. Okay, so uh, the, the source not have to be from Azure. No, no, no. It does not have to be Azure. It can be. It can be uh, any database. You see, it can be like an Apache Impala or or, or a NoSQL database like Cassandra or a Mongo or or just services. You know, like okay. services like Dynamics or or uh, Oracle, Oracle, PayPal. Okay, all those services we can copy the data from them, um, and then we can sync them again into all of those services in Azure. So the thinking usually is in Azure, give or take a few uh, peripheral services that are not Azure, but mostly in Azure we can we can sync the data too. So if we're going to look at the previous example, we had uh, we had a copy from a CSV file, some, some CSV export, and then uh, we, we synced it into a percat file. Now, for those of you who doesn't know, the advantage of using per cat files, and, and this is why a lot of people that, that are uh, messing around with data uh, love, the, love this file format, is because per cat files are uh, structured. You, I can set up a mapping and say, okay, the first, the first, uh, 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 the first uh, uh, column is, is a string, the another one is might be a date type, and, and everything stays tightly and, and, have, and have a clear schema. Now, data factory is not only about uh, copying data because it says, okay, this is the first part of the ETL is to extract the data, but I want to do some transformation. And when it comes to transformations in, in, in data factory, we have a few options. One of them is using Databricks. So for those of you who don't know Databricks, Databricks is, is a distributed uh, uh, computing solution using uh, uh, Spark, and I can just run any Databricks notebook or, or any any Python file, by the way, on that resides on Databricks. So we can just you know tell take data like, okay, take the, the, the step before and then run another uh, step after the previous one completes. I can do 
another one that said, OK, this one you can only run if the previous step uh, wasn't uh, successful or something like that. So it can branch things up. Um, and then I can just select like some data bricks and tell them, OK, this is my Python file. This is resides here in the DBFS and, and just run the Python file. And once that complete, they can create another copy data and then and then load it back. So, so we did extract here. We extracted the data from some source. We transformed it uh, using data bricks and we load it back into, let's say, the SQL database after we did all the calculation and transformation. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good tool. See that? That's 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 a um, that's Azure Data uh, Data Factory for you. Great, thanks. Yeah. So have a good day, Ares. Yeah. You too. Yeah. Bye.